What's going on YouTube? This is Ultima High Device Vids, and this is Tweak Recap. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys five of the best Cydia tweaks that are compatible with iOS 8.1. Let's begin. And the first tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called Slide to Kill 8 Lite. It's available in Cydia for free. And as of right now, there is no pro or paid version. There's just a light version. However, this version works great. What it allows you to do is kill all the applications in your app switcher with a simple swipe down on any of the applications. Now it may take a few tries, I've experienced this a few times, but as you can see, eventually it's just going to kill all the apps just like that. Now I'm not sure, it does seem a little bit inaccurate, it could take a few tries and that does in many ways defeat the purpose of it if you have to try several times, but I think it's still faster than killing all the applications manually, I'll show you again. As you can see that time it worked right away, but again, your results may vary. After you've installed the tweak, you could go into settings on your device and scroll down until you do see slide to kill a light. And you could go in there. You can enable or disable the tweak. And there is this kill now playing setting right here. And basically with this option on kill now playing, if you're playing music out of an application and you perform the kill all gesture, so you swipe down on any of the applications in the app switcher, it will kill the application that's playing music. And by default, it's disabled, so that won't happen. So I'll show you what happens by default. Let's go into the music app here and let's start playing something. And okay, so now I'll go into my app switcher and you can see I have the settings app and the music app open. And let's say I were to perform the gesture, as you can see right here, when I go back into my app switcher afterwards, the music app is the only thing that's still open and it's still playing music. And if I were to go into settings here, and enable the kill now playing option and then as you can see okay so I have settings and the music app opening the music app still playing as you can see if I were to perform that gesture now it's going to kill everything so let's try that one more time a few more times actually okay there we go so now we go back in and as you can see everything is gone and by the way I just want to point out it doesn't even matter which card you swipe down on when you're performing the gesture it's going to have the same result so Again, it really doesn't matter. You can slide down on any of the cards, whether it be the home screen or any of these applications, and it'll just kill everything. I'll show you with the home screen card over here. Again, it may take a few tries, but there you go. As you can see, it killed all the applications. So it may need a little bit more work as far as accuracy is concerned, but for the most part, it's a pretty good tweak, and it does work, again, most of the time. You can find it in Cydia for free. Again, it's called Slide to Kill 8 Lite. And the next tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called Safe Alarm. It's available in Cydia for free. And this is actually something that I've waited for for a very long time, and I'm glad it's finally here. It allows you to have a separate volume amount for your alarms. So normally the alarm clock volume, so if you have an alarm, it's tied to the ringer and alert setting in here. So whatever this is at, it's going to perform the same thing for your alarms. And that would probably make sense because the alarm is technically an alert. However, let's say your phone was at minimum uh, amount of ringer and you went to sleep, for example, and you just didn't want anybody to call you. However, you needed your alarm to go off. Of course, you would not wake up because your alarm would be completely silent. Let's say you wanted a separate scale for your alarm. That's what this tweak allows you to do. So after you've installed it on your device, you could scroll down in your settings app until you do see safe alarm. You could go in there. And of course, we have the ability to enable or disable the tweak, and we have our separate volume scale right here. So... As you saw earlier, my normal ringer amount was to the minimum, and now this is absolutely to the maximum. Of course, you can customize this to your liking. So again, let's say I just wanted to have no ringer. Let's say my device was completely silent. It was in silent mode, and I wanted my alarm to go off. So let's go ahead and open up the clock up here, and I'm just going to go ahead and set an alarm right here. It is 10.25. I'm going to set an alarm for 10.26, and I'll go into the repeat setting. Because it's Sunday, I'm just going to go ahead and select Sunday. And we'll go back at save. Now I'm just going to go ahead and wait for this alarm to go off. And I'll show you that even though my ringer and alert volume is down to nothing. Again, this is going to be loud because my safe alarm volume is up to the maximum. So I'm just going to go ahead and wait for this to go off. And I'll be right back as soon as it does. Alright, as you can see right here, it just finished. And it is making a sound. Even though, again, my ringer and alarms volume was completely down to nothing. I'll show you inside the sounds. You can see the ringer and alerts down to nothing, but again, inside of safe alarm, we could customize it to our liking. It's a very good tweak, especially if, again, if you want to go to sleep and have your ringer down to nothing, yet still, again, have the alarm volume up to the maximum. So you could have your device completely switched on mute, yet, again, still have that great alarm sound. And again, it's available in Cydia for free. It's called Safe Alarm.
And the next week I'm going to be showing you guys is called Little Brother. It's available in Cydia for 99 cents. And this tweak allows you to run your device at a different resolution than it came with. So you can run your iPod Touch 5th generation, which is what I have right here, let's say at the iPhone 6 resolution. And that will make all the icons smaller because the device will think that it has a larger display. So it'll make everything smaller so you have more room. So just to give you a comparison here, the icons over here on my iPhone 6 are smaller than the ones on the iPod Touch 5th generation. And the reason for that is because the display is larger, you have more room to fit all the icons into. Let's say you wanted the iPhone 6 layout on the iPod Touch 5th generation. That's what this tweak will allow you to do. Uh, you could also do the same thing with other device combos. So for example, let's say I was using this tweak on the iPhone 6 and I wanted to get the iPhone 6 Plus resolution. I could do that too. This tweak will allow you to get the resolution of any device on any device. So after you've installed this tweak on your device, you can go into settings and scroll down until you do see little brother and go in there. And in here, we're going to have three options. We have large, medium, and small. Now, large is the default for your device, and then medium is the resolution of the iPhone 6. As you can see right there, the icons just got smaller. And small is the iPhone 6 Plus. Now, small does have some issues on 4-inch devices like the iPod Touch 5th generation. And just for your information, the 4-inch devices that currently exist are the following. It's the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 5, the iPod Touch 5th generation. Also, the iPhone 5C. So basically what the issue is, is there's some display glitches, so if you have one of those devices, I would recommend just using medium. We also have these two toggles, home screen landscape and lock screen landscape. Home screen landscape normally is only on the iPhone 6 Plus, and lock screen landscape is not on any device on any iOS version. And you can enable both of these toggles on any of these versions as well, so large, medium, or small. I'm going to be enabling home screen landscape and lock screen landscape on medium, which is again the iPhone 6 resolution. And we can scroll through here and see in different instances what it's going to look like. And once we're happy, we can just go ahead and select set, and then we hit use whatever the option is, and your device will respring. The screen will just stay completely black, that's completely normal. And here we are, we're back up, and we can just go ahead and exit out. And as you can see right here, we now have the iPhone 6 resolution running on the iPod Touch 5th generation. As you can see, we have an extra row of icons down here, just like the iPhone 6. And also inside of applications, for example, settings, you can see we have a lot more stuff on the screen. It could just fit a lot more, again, items on the screen. We also have that home screen landscape, as you can see right here. It looks really good. And lock screen landscape as well. We'll go to the lock screen here, as you can see. We do have our lock screen landscape, and again, of course, we could switch it back and forth just like this. And we'll go ahead and unlock. Now, the passcode, as you can see right here, has some problems, but again, it's not meant to run, so you may experience glitches here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty reliable with the medium option. Let's go back into settings here, and I'll scroll down, and I am going to show you what the small, so the iPhone 6 Plus resolution looks like, and I'll show you why I don't recommend you use it. We'll go over to small here. And I'll just go ahead and enable lock screen landscape anyways, and we'll select set. Then we're going to hit use small, and of course our device is going to respring once again. And we're back up here, and let's just exit that to the home screen. Now you can see we have a lot more space, and the icons are definitely smaller, but you can see right there at the bottom there's this glitch. This is a known problem with this resolution on 4-inch devices. If you open up some applications, you're going to be seeing some more issues, as you can see down there. Let's go into a section. You see there's just some glitching. Sometimes it's worse than other times, sometimes it's more noticeable than other times, but it's definitely annoying. It'll kind of drive you crazy if you're using this all the time. There's the landscape mode, and it's really unfortunate because I actually really like this on 4-inch devices. I like the small, and I would definitely use it over medium, but again, it has some graphical issues. Hopefully those issues will be resolved quickly. You just have so much more space, as you can see, but again, we have these terrible glitches, and let's just go into landscape on the lock screen here. Slides it unlock. Again, we have that same issue with the passcode unlock screen. And I really hope that this issue is resolved because, again, it just looks really good. You have so much space. And inside the settings app, as you can see right here, we now have landscape mode because it thinks it's an iPhone 6 Plus. So it's not just home screen landscape with the small view. You also have, again, in applications. And I just wanted to put this out there that for any of the views, whether it be medium or large, some applications may not support this. So as you can see right here, again, we do have the normal iPhone 6 Plus view in the settings app, but some applications, for example, the Safari app, I know, you can see here, this is not supported. You can see it goes right back up to the normal resolution. You can see just the status bar there. It gets a lot bigger and then a lot smaller. And I'll go into portrait mode just to show you a little bit 
better as you can see right there it gets bigger and then smaller so again it's not going to work 100 percent of the time especially with these glitches but let's just go back into settings here and i want to show you once more inside the medium option let's go back over to um, little brother and we'll go back to medium and i'll just hit set and we'll use medium and i just wanted to show you that even in medium some of the landscape view inside of applications doesn't work now the iPhone 6 doesn't have many new features over previous devices. The iPhone 6 Plus does inside of applications, but it does have some. For example, the Notes app. And again, this is the iPhone 6 resolution that I'm running at right now. Let's go into the Notes app. And we'll go into Landscape. If we select New, we do have some new keyboard options over here, as you can see. And again, that does work just with the iPhone 6 view. However, it doesn't work in every app. For example, once again, Safari, it's the same thing. You can see right there, the status bar is large. Um, so again, it's going to work sometimes. It's not going to work other times. And again, that small view is just a nightmare. So I'd stay away from that. And again, it's a really good tweak. It definitely is very promising. You should definitely stick with the medium view because it works good. But hopefully it will be an update soon to fix those issues with small. And again, it's called Little Brother. It's available in Cydia for $0.99. Cents. And the next week I'm going to be showing you guys is called Eclipse. It's available in Cydia for $0.99. Cents. However, if you own the previous version on iOS 7, this version is free. And it is a separate package. It's called Eclipse 2. What this week allows you to do is have a night mode theme on iOS. So as you can see right here inside my settings app, I have this nice dark theme. I have the back buttons themed nicely. And of course, when I select an option, and you can see here text, it just has this nice color. You could customize this to your liking. It works with various applications in iOS that have the white theme and it turns it into the dark theme. As you can see, toggles work really good. And again, you could customize all this to your liking. So after you've installed it, you could scroll down inside your settings app until you find Eclipse 2. Go in there. In here, we have the ability to enable or disable the tweak. And you could disable it in the Springboard. And Springboard just means home screen if you want to. As you can see down here, we do have the dock darkened. So if you don't want that, you can enable, disable, and Springboard. And then we have this quit all apps option, and this is basically to apply some changes. However, some changes will require you to respring, and that's what the restart springboard option is. Down here we have tons of options, so we could go into here color options. As you can see, there's tons of stuff you could configure here. You could configure it to your liking. You could go into custom colors, and this is advanced stuff, so hexadecimal colors. I would recommend you stay away from that, so just focus on these things. Don't go into the, into the custom colors because that's pretty advanced. But anyways, you can customize all this to your liking, get the exact look that you want. And back here, we can go into advanced options, and you have the ability to customize some more things in here. And I would recommend you enable color loading screens, because if you don't, whenever you open an application for a split second, it's going to give you a white screen, and it doesn't really look good. So make sure you enable color loading screens. And again, you can choose your color in here. If you're just using the black theme, I recommend night. Let's go back. And then we have some more things to configure down here. So let's go back out. Next up, we have blacklisted applications, and this will allow you to disable this tweak from functioning in specific applications on your device. So if you want to enable specific apps for this tweak to not function in, you could do that right here. And again, you could scroll through all the apps that are on your device, whether they be stock applications like Messages or iTunes, or applications like Twitter, YouTube, you know, user applications. And next, we have an option called Auto Color Replacement, and this option is labeled as Experimental, meaning it's still in beta, so just leave this option as it is. It's a pretty advanced option. And again, once you're happy, I would recommend you restart your springboard. You can't quit a lapse that may work, but again, some settings require you to respring, so I just recommend you select Restart Springboard, and of course, your device will respring. And I'm back from respringing, and I'm just going to show you some applications that it looks good in. Let's go into the clock app here. As you can see, it looks really good, just very sleek overall with the toggles, the alarms. Everything looks really good inside the clock app, and there's various other applications. Let's say the photos app here. And again, we have these dark loading screens. Make sure you enable that option, as I mentioned earlier. just looks really good throughout the system. As you can see right here with these back buttons, just really sleek, good-looking tweak. One of my personal favorites is the calendar app. As you can see right here, it just looks really good. Very sleek look to the calendar app here. Just really well designed, good looking tweak. And again, it's called Eclipse 2. It's free if you own the iOS 7 version of Eclipse. But again, if you're a new user, you're going to have to pay 99 cents. But it's definitely well worth it. And the fifth and final tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called No Lock Screen Blur. It's available in Cydia for free. And this week will remove the blur from the passcode screen. As you can see right here, if we slide to unlock, we have no blur. You can still see the wallpaper clearly behind the passcode screen. Normally, this is blurred. 
And just to give you a direct comparison here, as you can see with a device that doesn't have the tweak installed, it does blur slowly as you slide to unlock, as you can see. But again, with this tweak, it completely removes the blur from the passcode screen. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And be sure to let me know down below in the comment section which one of these tweaks is your favorite. And I'll see you guys later.